I have the great pleasure of being joined now by Endocrine Society President, Dr. Richard Santon. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Congratulations on a terrific run, and I know what is going to be a wonderful week here. What are you most looking forward to? Well, the president has the chance to pick the presidential plenaries, and we want to focus on menopause. And the reason we want to do that is that over the last 10 years, the pendulum has swung that now for younger women, 50 or 55, the benefits of hormone therapy really outweigh the risks. So we've got two speakers that, that are going to address this, and one is going to be talking about precision medicine, which means that you determine somebody's genetic makeup and find out how that individual re will respond specifically to hormones. That's Dr. James Engel. And then Dr. Joanne Manson is going to be talking about personalized medicine, which means that you look at all of the individual risk factors and some of the things that might be benefits and tailor your therapy specifically to that individual. Such exciting topics, I think, for patients and for the doctors who treat them, certainly. When we spoke last year, we were talking about this whole idea of doctors and patients and this frustration perhaps of not having enough time and also maybe not having the money for research grants and things like that. Can you talk to me about the challenges nearly a year later? Well, the challenges with respect to research funding have got, not gotten any better. And this is really frustrating for younger people who haven't had the long-term research experience and data that they can be uh, funded early. So this is still a challenge. We've gone to the NIH and talked to them about this. Uh, we have uh, an advocacy campaign to, to try to uh, improve this. The other area that hasn't changed very much, and I'll just tell you about it again. Clinical endocrinology is complicated. Our hormones affect every tissue in the body. And if you have to sit down in 20 minutes, which the hospitals stipulate, and spend the time necessary to understand what the patient is saying, and then to do your examination, and then to work with the computer systems, the electronic medical records that we're working with, it makes it very, very difficult. And we have to figure out ways to get around this. Many of us do it by telephone calls after the appointment, where you then have a little bit more free time. But this is something that the Endocrine Society can really focus on. And I don't think that the one size fits all timing that you need to see patients. It's very different for cardiologists or kidney doctors or endocrinologists. We have a very uh, intellectual and a very complex series of problems to deal with. And it's challenging to help communicate that to the patients, but I think that's the beauty of meetings like this where you can come together and say, this is working for me, for example, the telephone calls. No, that's, that's absolutely right. And, and one of the real strengths of our society are that we have a lot of practicing physicians who can interact, though, with the basic scientists. So you really have this conversation back and forth, but the clinicians that are seeing patients can then network with each other and, as you say, figure out better ways of doing this. Ultimately, the society can use its advocacy uh, uh, role, which is very strong, to begin to, uh, to get the message out about this and change things for the better. And you are, I think, and really making a difference. Can you talk to me about that, what you're most proud of? Well, my last year has really been focusing on the next generation of endocrinologists, the, the, the young endocrinologists. They, they have many, many challenges. And we need to take the uh, expertise of the Endocrine Society to help them. So we've just approved and putting in place something called Endocrine Cases. Now what this is, is a consult program. So a young endocrinologist anywhere in the world encounters a very complex patient. And no one around him or the textbooks can tell him what to do. He, he can write, or she can write, uh, a brief case report to the Endocrine Society, and we'll send this out to two of the world's experts. And within a week, that young endocrinologist will get the suggestions of these uh, expert endocrinologists that have seen this so many times that they can say, this is exactly what you need to do. So this is education, but it's also empowering the, uh, the young endocrinologists we're just starting to try to do this for the young scientists also. also. And that's on the docket, but it's gonna take us some time to develop that. 
Well, what a great goal to bring great minds together, but then at the same time, prevent somebody from perhaps getting burned out or getting frustrated because they do have someone to talk to. Well, it's that, but you know, also the patient benefits. Because if you go with a complicated problem and your physician says, I don't know how to deal with this, but I know exactly how to get the right information. And if it's the world's expert, think of yourself as a patient who now has access to one of the, uh, the most experienced endocrinologists to help solve your problem. And this is going to happen. That is wonderful for the patients and the doctors alike. Anything else you want to tell us about your tenure? <laughs> well, you know that, that uh, our meeting is nine months uh, from the last meeting, so it's been a very, very shortened year. And I'm relatively late in my career, but the advantage and the opportunity to meet very talented people who are committed to this society, who have great ideas, uh, which allows me then to really expand my horizons in terms of what I'm thinking about or what I can accomplish. And this has been a, uh, it's really been the highlight of my, uh, my career to be able to have this brand new opportunity. It's a real honor to serve, but the society staff and all the members are what make this society very vibrant, and it's just fun to be involved with these people. And they all appreciate your commitment, I'm sure. Thank you so much for everything you've done, and thanks for being here with us today. You're quite welcome.